So now talking to a couple of the stars from Living Waters, uh, we've got Sean Stenning from Five Star Marine, Sue Altman, who's probably best known uh, around Phuket and Thailand for her work with the Phuket Has Been Good to Us Foundation and a million other things. Welcome, Sue. Thanks, Tim. And Sean. Thanks, Tim. So it's a really interesting situation or dynamic we've got, whereby Phuket's now getting people coming back and uh, things are looking good and places are starting to reopen and things slowly, very slowly, getting back to some sort of normal. But Sean, there is an ongoing sort of story behind all that still happening in Phuket. Yeah, I think though right now we have two major pockets in our community that are needing help. Uh, we have those right now who maybe 20 months didn't have work, ended up going back into employment, then tested positive, um, and then put into isolation. A lot of these people, you know, are not getting paid salary in isolation because they're still on maybe a freelance or a short contract rate. Um, so we're having to provide emergency food, food relief to these kind of people. And then I think the second pocket of our community, uh, those who uh, were laid off um, at the start of the pandemic and now the hotels are saying maybe they're unhirable because of their age or they haven't upskilled during the pandemic. Um, and these are the two areas right now that are really in the highest demand for um, food assistance. Like at the moment here in Phuket, I have a list of 19,000 people who are uh, requesting immediate food assistance across the island and most of that will be in home or community isolation. Now, so the, the need for some uh, ongoing charities something not new to you. Uh, Phuket's always had this reputation of uh, the sunshine and the beaches and the bars but uh, you, you've been working for what uh, over two decades trying to help some of the more impoverished people uh, on the island. Yeah, well, as you know, I work for a restaurant called Ban Rimpar and, and they've been into to looking after the community for since 1989. It, it's, going, it's gone on for a long time and it's going to keep going on and it's getting worse instead of getting better. And this pandemic has really um, dragged out and, as Sean said, there are so many people uh, who are really desperately in need. Now... We have some great charities on this island and um, Barnum Pass started Phuket has been good to us after uh, the Asian tsunami and that's a, a charity to teach English for free to underprivileged Thai children. We have the Good Shepherd who does wonderful work. We have some very good charities but all of these charities are also struggling to survive and to keep doing their work because the donations that they require um, just aren't there. So Living Waters, um, which was started by Five Star Marine, um, Sean behind all of that, he asked me would I come on board and uh, and work with him. Um, still working with Phuket has been good to us, but uh, we assess different charities and different needs in the community and we help finance um, different different uh, things that are needed by these charities and this is going to go on for a long time. Uh, we, we have started to accept donations as well as the money that is, is raised through Five Star Marine but um, and if you want to go to our website which is livingwaterspuket.com um, you will see that you can you can actually donate there but there's so many different um, people out there that are going to need help for a long, long time and hopefully we're going to be around for a while to, to help assist with this. That's all we've got time for. Uh, <laughs> just about to tell the whole story. Uh, thank you, Sue. Sorry, so, Tim. So, yeah, we are talking now about Living Waters, uh, which is like an umbrella charity, which brings a lot of the other charities sort of uh, under its care and mentorship. So... Uh, what was the critical need or how did Living Waters come about? Uh, good question, Tim. Look, we, we've been doing this life bag project and we always thought that once the life bags were not needed that we would just kind of go back to running our business. But what I, I started to realise was the life bags were really just a bridge over the water and we really needed to help build the other side of that bridge. Um, and, you know, it really helped the community get restarted because life bags really is just a band-aid. Um, now what we really want to do is focus on how do we never get here again and that's a that's a really big task and it's not something that we're going to be able to achieve in the next you know few few years you know this is a long-term plan but as you know Sue said we're trying to bring some other foundations in under our umbrella we're trying to finance them and fund them and help them with projects we just did a solar project at um, Good Shepherd in Phuket Town 
um, where now they, they no longer need to pay for electricity uh, for what they're doing. And in fact, they're actually adding power back into the grid. Um, and this is a great project, you know, uh, Phuket has been good to us, it's got a new IT lab, um, and the teachers are all uh, resourced up now with uh, new computers and teaching aids. Um, on top of that, Coconut Island had no clean water for their school, and now they've got clean water. So these are some of the projects that we're doing outside of Life Bags, and some of the stuff that we hope to do even more when this emergency food relief goes away. So, I mean, Phuket's not alone uh, in around Thailand, where there are lots of little charities doing some fantastic, uh, very local work. But the idea of Living Waters is to try and, at least in the, the case of Phuket, do something much broader. Up in Bangkok, there's also the Bangkok Community uh, Help Organisation, and they've sort of been doing the same thing. They were helping out the people who were suffering uh, with COVID and getting food deliveries and the isolation, and now they've expanded into sort of a broader charity. So this is uh, something that I think we're going to see more of in Thailand, where some larger groups will help these smaller groups uh, go and get some some real money rather than the uh, the sort of the raffles and the, the fundraising nights and uh, Min Su's pole dancing uh, night didn't raise a lot of money. Well. No, it didn't raise a lot, but that was because you kept coming up and wanting to take over. That's true, that's true. I would so, say, Tim, the, uh, part of the inspiration behind Living Waters, and shout out to the people at Bangkok Community Help, is that we saw the amazing work they did during the pandemic and how they evolved that into you know, more than just life bags. They were doing community help centres, they were doing health, they were doing antigen tests, they were rebuilding schools. And I thought, you know, this is an amazing concept. And I did reach out to them and we talked about what we were doing together. And I, I truly believe that our two models are the future of foundations and charity work in, in Thailand because it's an overarching view um, and it allows us to not just specialise in just a single thing um, and more specialise in the, the arm of being able to bring awareness and funds to the cause. So, so what, how, what do you see in the way of the, the critical needs uh, on, on the island of Phuket? Where, where is money needed to, to help the, the broader community? Uh, at the moment, because of the way it's been with so many of the Thai people have either left Phuket, um, so many businesses have closed down. Now we need more people, we need the tourists to come back of course, but we also need people to come back and work here. But in the meantime, we, there's so many people who need funding, to need help to get their businesses back, to get their um, different projects done and that's where we can look at different projects if people come to Living Waters and say look we've got this project we can't fund it um, or we can part fund it but we need some help will you look at it and that's what we want to do we want to look at all different projects I think something that's important is that when you look at when people look at three foreigners sitting here uh, actually three Australians um, they sort of say well why, why are you doing it you know isn't it shouldn't this be Thailand there are a lot of Thai people behind us and working with us on these things. It, it's Yes, it's been um, started by foreigners and we're people, all of us, who have lived here for a long, long time and call Phuket our home. And that's why we're looking at, at doing things for Phuket initially. Uh, but there is a lot of Thai people who we're working with who they care about their own province, their own people, and, uh, and they work with us and, and they also come up with the different ideas and let us know about the projects that need, uh, need work on. Sean, uh, Five Star Marine got stuck into uh, clear problems very early on uh, when the pandemic sort of hit the, the people who were put out of work here in Phuket. C could you bring us up to date with the life bags and ha how that project evolved and what the current issues are here with, with the life bag needs in Phuket? Yeah, good question, Tim. Uh, now we're, uh, I think, are over 600,000 life bags over the last 21 months. Um, we evolved from, you know, the, the humble beginnings was in a spare room at my house, packing 300 bags, and that would take just the three of us or four of us. You know, it would take us a whole day to do it. What's a life bag? Uh, we're talking uh, dry food supply, so two kilograms of rice, uh, noodles, uh, cooking oil, some kind of flavor sauce, mackerel, um, and then maybe just one other thing that uh, the suppliers have on special that day um, and that's generally how a life bag works but we've also moved into larger life bags because when people are in quarantine uh, you know we're talking a 10-day quarantine so they need almost double the amount of supply so that's what we, we call that a 
for want of a better word, a super life bag, because um, the idea is to be able to get them through all of quarantine and isolation. And the question is, really, is why is that needed? Because these guys are quarantined and isolating after 21 months of, of no work. Maybe they got back to have salary for a month, and maybe that contributed to paying some of their debt down because a lot of families here went into debt to survive or sold off their assets to survive um, and so that's why it's needed right now and I think what is the future of the life bag project hopefully it, it's a short-term problem that can be solved um, and we're really excited to say that some of the major hotels here on the island are joining us in this project over the next couple of weeks to try and get a uh, as a whole, we're trying to get an, another 5,000 life bags out into the community as a team. So that's, you know, in the next two weeks, that's what we've got to get out. But I think we're here for at least two or three more months providing emergency food relief. And hopefully after that, we can pivot to something which is more sustainable long term. Sure. We gave us a bit of a preview earlier, so could you give us some contact details if people would like to find out more about Living Waters and uh, get in contact or even donate? Would you like to give us the details? Sure. Uh, I think the easiest thing is to go to the website, which is www. You don't have to say www. Oh, I know. Living, <laughs> leave me alone. Uh, livingwaterspuket.com. If you go there, you will find all the details. There's a donate. Uh, you can donate through Weeboon. We have a Weeboon account. So that's the best way. You can also go, we have a Facebook page as well. And you can see all of the different things, the photographs and everything of uh, all of the life bags being packed and distributed. It is a really major job that's being done here. And as Sean said, we hope this won't keep continue for too much longer with the life bags, but there will be an ongoing things that we need to do on this island uh, to help to get it back and even move it further into the future. So uh, there you go, that's the, uh, the website, livingwaterspuket.com. Sean, just uh, to say goodbye, could you perhaps give us a quick preview of some projects that might be coming up over the next 12 months that uh, you've got uh, happening, happening in your mind at the moment? <laughs> Oh, and that's a, that's a great question. So right now we're looking at a project that will uh, get some uh, out of work people into uh, sewing and then selling that. We're actually that project's already successful right now. Sewing. Yeah, it's a it's a, an alternate way for people who are outside of a job. They're coming together. They're sewing. They're reselling what they're sewing, um, and it's actually profitable. They're making money month on month right now. So we're going to put some more funding into that. Um, we're also looking at a lot of the islands around Phuket uh, don't have access to clean water. That's a big goal of us right now, to, to introduce clean water to at least every school on the surrounding islands. We've done that on Coconut Island. Our next goal will be uh, Konaka Ye. After that, we'll see what other islands we can get to. Um, additionally, um, a lot of people really don't realise this, but those islands also don't have any form of... Um, rubbish disposal. Um, a lot of it is put into a big pit on the island so we're starting to put together um, a project to transport all, all that back weekly into Phuket and put it into incinerators but on top of that start recycling as well. Um, these are all just some of the projects we're looking for but we're also we're really interested in education progress pro projects where we can get kids back into school. We just uh, helped uh, 13 schools on the island put uh, 300 plus students back into school. Why can't they go? They, they didn't have the money to buy uniforms, they didn't have money to buy books, they didn't have money to pay the small fee that the public schools need them to pay. So we got them all back in and the goal is just to keep doing this. We've got to get people re-educated, re-skilled, uh, re-learning so that we can get them into jobs that maybe are not so tourism based so that if this ever does happen in the future that we're not a 95% uh, people out of workforce. You know, I, I, I'm realistic, I know we're never going to get that number you know, really low but if we can get like another 10% into an alternate income stream well, that will be 10% uh, less mouths to feed next time. Okay, well, Sue and Sean, you're, you're both heroes in my mind. You've done uh, incredible work on the island of Phuket, and we do recognise that uh, charity organisations around the country do some incredible work, and we look forward to speaking more about them as well, including a bit of an update uh, about what's happening with Bangkok Community Help, who we spoke about a lot last year, but they've also continued to do some great work. A lot of things happening that don't really get to the news, but uh, we're very proud of uh, people like Sue and and Sean, who uh, are really pillars of their community, doing some fantastic work. Thanks to you both. So that's the website. It's livingwaterspuket.com. Thank you to Sue. Thank you very much, Tim. And to Sean. 
Thanks, Tim, and you guys have been amazing throughout the pandemic, putting coverage and, and shining lights onto all of these great things. So you're doing a great job, Tim. Thank you. There's been no shortage of things to cover, and uh, we, we do recognise all the great work right around Thailand by a lot of different communities, which we look forward to covering in coming months. This is The Tiger, and Tim Newton here in Phuket. Thanks for watching.